And we're back with some more Dyson Sphere program. And we're, we're going pretty well. We've got our little Dyson built up, but to expand it, we're going to need a bunch of research. However, there is one thing that has been pointed out to me. We need an awful lot more hydrogen. Um, unfortunately, this star system I moved to does not have a gas giant, uh, which is sort of important. It turns out using oil to get hydrogen is very, very, very inefficient. Our best bet, use a gas giant. Best place to find a gas giant? Well, somewhere nearby. It's going to be interstellar. We're going to have to travel a distance. Unfortunately, that means we're going to need to build space warpers. Because, yes, this entire massive oil setup is not nearly as efficient as just popping down a bunch of uh, devices on a hydrogen giant. Or a hydrogen gas giant, whatever you want to call it. Now, that means we need to make space warpers. Oh! And you that mod I installed, the one that uh, lights up at night? Turns out it turns you into a sun. Just keep an eye on the solar panels there for a second when we turn it on. And oh look, it looks like the solar panels really love us. That was pointed out in the comments. That is, okay, an unexpected side effect of being able to see at night, but it's also pretty cool. <laughs> okay, Alright, we are going to use this to produce ourselves some strange matter, or, I don't know, quirky matter? Whatever you want to call it. We're going to make some of this stuff. Due to some wonderful recording software issues, we... I, I kind of messed up the recording of a, a chunk for there, so let's just have a quick go back over some of the silly things I got up to. One was we put all of these uh, miniature particle colliders together, they're finished, and they're pumping out strange matter, which goes in here. That strange matter comes down here along with some diamond and some iron plate, and we turn that into your gravitational lenses. Yeah, we're kind of short on these because we don't have enough hydrogen. Well, wait, no, we don't have enough deuterium to keep all of these active. And because we don't have enough deuterium, we can't keep all of these active. But we'll be able to fix that once we have enough deuterium to go and make a bunch of space warpers. But, you know, we're not going to worry about that. Then uh, all the lenses come down here and they get turned into warpers. Or, well, the few lenses we produce come down here and get turned into warpers and the warpers get spit back up in here. We, we definitely need more hydrogen. However, once this is filled up with 50 warpers, the rest of them start going into storage. So it seems like they can hold 50. I don't... Hmm. I have to see about demanding these elsewhere. I'm going to have to play around with those on the side. But with that done, our next job is to start producing... What is it? Ah, yes. The things we're going to need for the hydrogen giants, as in the, the actual... What should I call these things again? Orbital collectors. Now, to get the orbital collectors working, we're going to need a bunch of our interstellar logistics stations. We're, we were running a bit low... And our processors were a bit low, so to make up for that, we had to double processor production. God, everything's in the way. So we doubled processor production to make sure that it worked. Unfortunately, that stifled our silicone production, so... Or, sorry, silicon production. Silicon? Yeah, silicon production. Which meant we had to double down on our silicon production. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. And how are we looking? But that means we're going to have to increase our silicon ore production as well. But be before we do that, we threw in some of these. This is just uh, accumulators. We're going to need a bunch of those. Oh, wow. They fill up pretty quickly. I think we need 200 of the those, so we're going to need like about 20. Yeah, we'll give us 20 of those. Thank you very kindly. 20 will do. Uh, yeah, we're going to need 20 of those, and we're also going to need a bunch of these engines over here. We're just going to manually craft a bunch of these. I, I don't see any reason not to. And once we have about 50 of them, we're going to go find the nearest gas giant. I think there's a planetary system about four light years away, or at least two planetary systems that are four light years away. And we're going to see if any of them have gas giants. In the meantime, uh, while that's all catching up, I'm going to find some more silicone to tap into. After playing around for a bit, uh, installing, a, well, we had to install some more copper mines, some silicone mines, some iron mines, uh, yeah, a bunch of expanded production. We've managed to get our hands on 30 of the orbital collectors. So 30 orbital collectors, let's go find ourselves a gas giant. Now, God, the planet looks, well, very well organized right about now. There's so much going on. Uh, the plan here is we are going to fly up to space, and then we're going to find something. I believe there's two planets within four light years of us. Ah, uh, there is the SAS, 4.53 light years. I'm thinking that might be an idea. We could go there and check it out. The reason being, well, it's close by, and I think there's an one more. Ah, uh, there's Alcor, 4.59. Actually, let me have a quick look about it. Turns out we have the two closest systems to us are ta to sun which is 4.02, and Ursa Minoris, which is 4.25 light years away, but it just looks way cooler, so I think I'm just going to go there. No no offense to the other planets, it's just, uh, it, the name is just way more awesome. All right, let's go have a quick gander over here and see what they've got in store for us, shall we? Yeah, I still haven't gotten bored of that, uh, that warp system, warp ability. If we've done this right and I've aimed it, we should be able to crash right into the planet. There we go. Perfection. All right, we should be right in above the system. Let's have a quick look-see in what we got here. 
Oh, I don't think we've got the uh, planet we were looking for, but resource-wise, ooh, kimberlite ore, sulfuric acid. No, but dear lord, that's so much copper. You know what? We will be coming back here just to set up some, some basic resource mines. That is pretty awesome sauce. All right, let's land, refuel, and get out of here. I really should maybe have brought a couple of more uh, coal burners. Eh, we'll, we'll sort it out on our next trip. Having a pre-built power grid to draw upon when you're trying to recharge your mecha? Much better. I can't wait till we actually get the research up and running so we can improve on this. It's just this stopping is kind of annoying. Welcome to the Tar Sun system. Oop, there's the closest planet. Let's go see if we can't land right on its face. Okay, come on. Ugh, I feel like I'm getting an awful lot better at that. Whew. Right, let's see what the this system has in store for us. Do you have a gas giant? Do you have a gas giant? Oh, not seeing one. No, crude oil. God damn it. Why do none of these have gas giants? That's just... Mm. Ooh, is that an ocean world? Do you know what? Let's go have a little bit of a splash around in the pool. Welcome to an ocean world. When you want to just kick back your feet and relax and observe the ocean swell in, a, in that pool. Whatever. But the great thing about these is, you do have to fly a little bit, but once you fly a little bit, all that happens is, well, you run out of ocean, and then you end up just sort of collapsing into the... Wait, why am I not collapsing into the sea? Damn it. Come on. Don't make a liar out of me. You're able to just walk under the seabed. Well, I was there a minute ago. All right, I can't figure out how I did it, but the last two times I landed on these planets, I ended up just sort of landing on the surface, and or landing on the ground, and walking underneath the water. And now I can't seem to do it, no matter what I do. I even tried crashing back into the planet again. Doesn't seem to work. Okay, maybe I'm missing something, or maybe there's a, a tr an knack to it. If you know what it is, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, yeah, back to hunting for gas giants. The closest gas giant I know of is the one on Andromeda, our home system. I think we're going to be importing our hydrogen from there. So efficient of us to move just five light years away and have to transport a lot of it. But, you know, th that's the way things just work out sometimes. I will admit, it's a little bit good to be back at our home system. I do enjoy this. Well, it will be nice to come home and see this spaghetti we left behind. Also, we, we did sort of develop this bit. And, ooh, there's actually a few already gas collectors already deployed over there, so this should make things a little bit simpler. Once, of course, we recharge at our local recharging facilities. I remember this place being... bigger? Like, when you look at it, it's like... Yeah, there's, there's, there is a bunch of stuff all over here, but it's not even close to the industry we've already put down on our new setup. Damn. Once you do get access to those towers, it really makes scaling up just so much simpler. I'm going to have to completely redo my tech choices to rush for that in future. Anyway, let's go uh, harvest a gas giant, shall we? And there's the two collectors we deployed earlier. They should be absolutely chockers full of deuterium and hydrogen. Oh yes, please. We are going to start placing you all the way along here. Oh god. Yeah, I see what people mean. I, I was two dots off of the uh, the actual perfect corner. You know what? That's fine. I can live with that. It's not going to annoy me because if I had to go and replace the other two, we'd lose all the hydrogen and deuterium we collected. And I'm not doing that. Uh, this, this, this could take a couple of minutes. And there we have it. 35 orbital collectors. All churning out hydrogen and deuterium for us and our beautiful base abroad. This should work. I think our people can come here and pick it up. If they can't, what we can do is we can have an intermediate station on the local planet and have that warp them. But I'm not sure if the ships can come here, warp here, and warp out again. Uh, there's no way to actually deposit ships on those things, unfortunately. All right, let's uh, head back home and see if we can't summon some of all of those lovely, tasty goodies back to us. Well, our new home. Ah, good to be back. Good to be back indeed. Let's go find our recharging station. <laughs> it's going to take a while to recharge otherwise. And then... Let's see if our little trip played off. This section here happens to be our deuterium facility. Well, it needs deuterium to function, and it provides our space warpers. However, I can't really find a way to dump the warpers into this automatically. You can't really get them delivered. But what I can do is set up at this transport belt over here to kick out some warpers. Uh, can I? Oh, sorry, one second. We will get that to warpers. There we go. They should go straight over there and into the system. And um, okay, 50 warpers installed. Nice. Then all we gotta do is chuck a bunch of ships on top of it. Oh, please tell me I have ships in my inventory. Totally did have ships in my inventory. I didn't go off and get some. Alright, they're they're launching. Nice. That means they're heading towards the planet we want them to go to. If we zoom out here, we should be able to see them take off. The question is what direction do they head in? 
Right, we've got three ships. Oh, wow. Okay, they're off to Andromeda. That's... Okay, that's pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and we can actually track them. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll be back in five. I just want to see how this works out. Yep, they come right back to you. Nice. Okay. That's that automated. Uh, oh, we do have to request hydrogen and a few other bits and bobs. How is this looking over here? Oh, we've got... Yeah, we've got a, a fair ton of fair amount of warpers already, but we're gonna, definitely going to need more. I need to start dumping warpers into all of the relevant facilities. Uh, for example, where is it? Where is their hydrogen for place? Yeah, we don't need all this oil, it seems. Oh, well, you live and you learn. A couple of quick notes on this. When you do summon uh, your space warpers here, they do automatically fill that. And another thing you do is you don't have to summon them. I'm feeding space warpers out of this and into this one. You don't actually have to set it up as a requester. It just automatically fills up this slot down here automatically. Oh, wait, that's automatically twice. Never mind. Then we can stick in 10 ships there. And this place is where our hydrogen goes, but we're going to make that remote demand. And what that should result in is, yep, chunk, 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 as all the ships go to pick some up. That, that is going to supplement our hydrogen supply. Oh, and our deuterium supply. We're going to have a lot more of both very, very soon. Now, I could extend this on. Hmm. You know what? We might have to extend that on later, but not just yet. I think for now, we're pretty good. We've got our hydrogen supply under control and our uh, deuterium supply under control. All right. Next up, what was it? Science. That was it. We wanted to get into science so we could research the stuff that allows us to expand the Dyson Sphere. And if we can expand the Dyson Sphere out, then that means we can get more power so we can make more science. Yes, yes. Now I remember. Our plan here is very simple. We're going to aim for about 250 science per minute of all the five sciences. That shouldn't be too hard to achieve. And that should hopefully get us enough of a Dyson Sphere tech without crippling our power grid. What's our power grid looking like at the moment? Probably not that great. You know what? We'll worry about that later. So first thing I did was I installed an extra layer of copper, so now we have enough copper plate. Oh, one thing I should probably point out. Can't remember if I've showed this off before, but this is the Dyson Sphere program calculator. Don't know who made it, don't care, it's amazing. Oh, Kirk McDonald, this is the same one as the factorial calculator, it looks very, very similar. Anyway, this here is what I'm using to do our other calculations. For example, we need 66 of uh, copper, blah, 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 all because we've got the 250 science. So if I ever pick out some arbitrary number, it seems, of stuff I'm trying to build for a reason, it's because I've looked up the, the, the numbers here. So based on those numbers, I added in an extra row of copper. Each one of these is about 30 long, so instead of going the 60 whatever, we went up to... What, 390? Because why not? We already have three rows of iron plate. I think we're good on that one, though we're going to need more magnets in a bit. I also needed more titanium, so... But well, we sort of threw it on here at the back. We didn't have the, the space for it, so we just sort of threw in another row of titanium there. That takes care of our titanium production. Uh, what do we need on top of that? Ah, oh, yes, magnets. So now that we need magnets, an extra row of magnets, not the actual, actual magnetic cause, just the magnets for now, we're going to pile them down here with another furnace setup, because... Why not? This is the forge world side of the planet. When doing these big forge setups, the thing that used to annoy me know most was figuring out how long are we supposed to make these. Now there's a, well, the simplest thing to do, you know what, we'll do it the easy way instead of doing belts first. What you do is grab one of these, we'll place it down here, and see these squares? There's one big square here, and then there's another big square here. It's sort of all gridded out. Well, all you need to know is, if you grab these and you go three grids long, you've got exactly ten. And then that's actually repeatable. So the next one's going to be right there, and that will actually give you another 10. So three grids at a time gives you 10, which means you only have to do that three times. Or, more realistically, you'll probably go something like this and go, well, that's another 20, and then you go down to here, and now we're at 30. It's just a fast way of, oh, man, I totally made that out of sync because I was rushing. But the point stands. You just do it uh, three grids at a time gives you 10, so nine of them gives you the 30 you're going to need to do your section and we'll just delete all of that because you know what we're just going to start with the belts anyway so maybe a little bit of overkill here we maybe put on a few too many magnets but i was sick of running short of them for different builds and i'm like you know what let's just overkill them and then down here we've got the uh, magnetic coils being produced on the other side all feeds right back in here and now we've got a decent stockpile and we don't have to worry about running out of them anytime soon nice Hey, what was next up on the agenda? We definitely have enough metal gears. We only needed about ooh, 11 of these assemblers. We've got a few more than that, though. We do have to upgrade these to level 3, and then, you know, I'm doing this everything on based on the, the theory that we'll upgrade all these assemblers to level 3 when the time comes. 
So next up is green circuits, of which we need 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Actually, we're already on top of that. Perfect. Actually, maybe that's show on a couple. You know, overkill is not real. Wait, wait, wait. I double checked the numbers on these. 10 level 3 assemblers making green circuits or circuit boards. Yeah, that actually maxes out the return line. So that wouldn't work unless... Actually... Hmm... It might work, actually, if we do just one teensy tiny little change. There we go. Ten more circuit board assembly machines chucked on. Now, you may be thinking, but that, that's going to overload the line. But can you see it? Can you see the change? It's really hard to see, but if we come in close here, you'll notice the return line actually hops up here and goes above the other return line below it. And then the two return lines sort of come down here. One of them continues on. The other one takes a bit of a ride and comes back in here. Meaning this one row can actually return two rows of circuit boards. It's just uh, the way these things produce is they only require, what, two iron plate produce one? Oh, I might want to double down on iron plate. So we might want to run an extra iron plate out there to fix it, but... Oh yeah, actually we will, but we don't need the green circuits just yet. Actually, you know what? Let's max this sucker out and see what she can do. A little bit of a change here. You'll see the, uh, this is actually the iron line coming from here towards this direction and it sort of replaces this iron line that's, that's almost expended. And that gets sucked into the machines to make sure that both of these keep running. Now, is this a smart plan? Not really, we probably could have spread this out and put it somewhere else, but we'd already built it here, so why not? It's the smartest dumb idea I've had in a while. <laughs> okay, that definitely takes care of uh, green circuit production. We are, or sorry, circuit boards. We are rock solid on them for the time being. Let's see what else needs a little bit of upgrading before we science this out. Motors wise, we look to be good. You know, these motors here, the electric motors, yep, sorted, we got more than enough. Uh, electromagnetic turbines, definitely more than enough. And it turns out for science, you do not need any of the super magnetic rings. That's all for Dyson Sphere stuff, which, yeah, we just want a bit of science first. We'll, we'll Dyson Sphere it later. All right, is there anything else left doing? Oh, I've got the light back on again, haven't I? Yeah, I, I still kind of like it. Just the way all those solar panels follow you around. It, it, it makes you feel like you're being watched. It's creepy, yet almost soothing at the same time. Glass-wise, we definitely have enough production facilities. Uh, unfortunately, we don't actually have enough stone incoming. I think I need to set up a couple of more stone mines. For the stone setup, we went through something a little different. We went to one of the nearer planets, the desert one, because the desert one is covered in stone. They've got, what, 22 million stone on here? It just seems simpler to go to the other planet. This way I can pave over the stone on our home planet. I don't have to worry about it getting in the way of our buildings. Uh, at the same time, you'll notice this is not going anywhere. That's because we've done something slightly different here. Let's dump 50 ships in here. So those 50 ships are set to... The load for the drones is 100%, meaning they'll all carry 70 stone at a time. And all of them are heading that direction, which looks a bit odd, right? Well, that's because this isn't the only setup. What we've actually done is... Where are you? Ah, over here. We only have one place on the planet that goes for interplanetary. This one here. This one's actually got some logistics vessels, which is good. It doesn't actually have any drones, though. So you'll see this place over here is also doing the same thing. They're basically... Those two are feeding this one. And then this one has the transport ships that carry it all back to our, our forge world. This way we've got all the stone we'll maybe not ever need, but quite a lot of the stone we're ever going to use. All, the, all off this one desert planet. Now, let's head back home. Is there any other things we need to top up on before we get into the science? If I could find out where home is. Uh, that's beta 3. Ah, there we go. Home sweet home. Let's uh, let's have a quick warp over there. It's always the most fun part of the day. And... Impact. Boom. Yoink. That just makes life so much faster. Uh, let's see what else we're missing on this glorious, glorious planet. For our silicone production, we need about 120 of these. So, yeah, 3, 6, 9, 12. There's 120. It was a little bit of spaghettios here and there, lining things up and getting them right, but that should provide us with enough silic hmm, silicon? Silicon? Yeah, silicon for our needs. Okay, that's that one done, and we just need to... Ah! I swear to God, there's so many towers now, it's getting to be difficult to find stuff sometimes. The camera just keeps getting blocked by them. Uh, that was it. We want to change this to silicon ore, and then we just want to make that local demand. Yeah, we'll make that half a belt. It's fine. And done. Right. 
Oh my god. Let me just check a few more things here. I think we're almost, almost ready to start doing science. Our diamond supplies are a bit short. We needed 25 of those. We, we upgraded just a tad more than that. However, the hard part is going to be this energetic graphene. We need a hundred of them. Uh, we only have 60, so we're going to need to stick in another two rows of this. Jesus. This stuff just keeps... It keeps just increasing all the amount of things we're going to have to make. All right, let's just stick to another one over there. We're going to have to make some extra science world at some point. Uh, but no, we just want some basic science so we can knock out the Dyson Sphere stuff. Uh, two more of these. Two, oh, God. Two more rows of these now to go in here. There we go. 120 energetic graphite production facilities. Whew. Right. There, there can't be much left, right? No, no. I, no I've just jinxed myself, haven't I? There's going to be like a, a bajillion something or others. Uh, what else is there left to check? Or should we start building and then just fill in the gaps? No, 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 no. We're going to check one or two more things like, ooh, graphite production and a few others. We need plastic. We have literally zero plastic being produced in the base because we didn't need it for any of the buildings we were producing. So we're going to stick down a whole bunch of plastic right here and see how it looks. These things are actually incredibly simple. All we did is we hooked up some graphite. We already had that in here because it's our graphite production. Threw in some refined oil to go with it. Graphite and refined oil and boom, there you go, plastic. Unfortunately, we couldn't actually fit the plastic in here. We have literally no more inputs, outputs left on this damn thing. So we're having to output the plastic over to this side where it gets stored in that tower. Here's that uh, local supply. Yeah, remote supply, perfect. Now, that's not quite enough plastic, though, is it? I think we sticked out another row on the opposite side. Uh, these things don't consume much resources for the... Well, relative to what you're, the size of the space they take up, they don't consume a lot of resources, so we can stick another row of plastic producers on the opposite side of this belt. Still won't eat into production. Or, still won't eat into the amount of resources on the belt, so we won't run out. Second row installed. We might have to put in a few power poles, but that will be plastic production sorted. Next thing we have to buff is cashmere crystals. Dear lord, this is getting exhausting. Oh yeah, so cashmere crystals... Casmere? Cashmere... Pink crystals. So we're gonna get the pink crystals up to this efficient level, which is going to be about ooh, 12, well, 11 point something. But we need about 12. We're gonna put in about 14, then we're gonna be a bit shy. Now, the huge cap on these things, though, is the hydrogen consumption. These things consume 12 hydrogen to be produced, and it's for a second. Looking at our little calculator thing here, it tells me I can only run, like, was it about seven of these? A little bit less than seven of these on one full belt of hydrogen. Which means this one down here, all of this stuff back here is completely useless because, yeah, the hydrogen's never going to make it that far. Unless we use uh, whatever little tricks from earlier and run a second hydrogen line across the top of the original one. And then we can feed the second half of this. There we go. Second layer of hydrogen installed. That means we can run 14 of these suckers at the same time, which should cover our science needs. Hydrogen-wise, we're actually looking pretty good. You know what? Let's... Uh, Chuck it up a bit. This thing eats chew hydrogen at a crazy rate, but we do have plenty coming in from our gas giant. Then the rest of it slides down here, and you know what? I think you've had enough. We'll just get rid of you. Done. All right. Anything else that left that needs doing? Oh, great. I just realized we need 34 of these plane filters. 34 of them. That's, that's half of the required amount right there. But on the bright side, they don't actually consume a whole belt of resources to make this. So I think we just sort of fold it. We'll just continue these two belts on, swing them around and put them back up the other side. Why not? It should probably work, right? What I mean by fold it around is just a little trick I've done a few times before, I think, on this playthrough. We'll just grab these resources here, get them to go all the way around and up the other side. I mean, we could run fresh lines, but this would take up more of the space or more of the ports on those uh, towers up there, and we keep running out of those. At the same time, this same return line can be used because this thing doesn't actually consume all the resources here or fill up a whole belt. It's just, these are really slow to produce. It's what, 12 seconds? 12 seconds per plane filter. The problem here is not the uh, amount of resources coming in, it's just the amount of time it takes to process everything. So let's just stick another 17 down here and that'll bring us all the way up to 34. Ah, just beautiful. You gotta love it when a plan comes together. That's just, yes, exactly what we wanted. Now, just, I got super distracted after that. And I went to check on something else, which was, oh yeah, these uh, blue circuits. What do you call them? Microprocessors? I mean, microcrystalline components. Yeah, I'm never going to remember that. Uh, these things down here are a bit weird. You can run 20 of them off a, a belt of copper. The problem is, uh, we sort of squished them in here between these two towers and they weren't quite right. So what I've ended up doing is running these resources down here and around the corner and up here. So this 
from here all the way down and these four here is 20 and then we've got another 20 or 21 right here feeding off these two lines and all of that feeds back into this tower because that is the sane and reasonable way to do things uh, at the same time I think yeah this is going to be our processor well these are our processor production that's actually up to spec so what's left I think we've got just about everything sorted now quantum chip production is at capacity and uh, that's what the plane filters are for so this thing is now up and running at perfect capacity nice all right next oh we're gonna need those product particle broadband things at some point aren't we yeah that's gonna get awkward how's our warpers looking 5,000 warpers in storage I think we're good to go interstellar if we need more resources turns out we are going to need 12 of these down here these particle containers easy peasy these things don't even take much of a belt so we can just extend this on and f slap on a few others right particle containers done all of those should feed back. actually where do they feed back I've kind of forgotten where they go oh wow oh wow we've almost got 10,000 of them in stockpile okay that'll that'll keep us going for a little while uh, I think is there anything left so it turns out we need 17 strange matter production facilities so that's a uh, 17 miniature particle colliders producing these things Thankfully though, we've got particle containers, iron plate, and deuterium all nearby. Deuterium is in this one, we were using this for a whole bunch of stuff, and the particle containers and the iron plate are over here because they're also really involved, they're also involved in the production of these, uh, where is it? Ah yes, these, strange matter. Oops. So maybe we should extend this on a little bit? Oh, I think that can be arranged. Got anything in the way? Nope. Uh, yeah, let's make this just a little bit bigger, shall we? 16 strange matter production facilities it these things are pretty awesome looking though gotta give it to them all right with that done i realize there's still particle broadband left isn't there we haven't even touched that one yet but that'll allow us to get level three assemblers and then we can upgrade everything uh, let's see what that requires you know it's late and there is no way i'm being subtle about this all we need to produce these things is carbon nanotubes crystal silicone and plastic so request all of them, dump it all back in, and a nice clean open space to build the damn things in. Let's stretch them out. This should only take two seconds. Like I said, simplicity in itself. We're just going to run three belts of the resources straight down here, suck them into the machines, and... Oh, wait a minute, that's... Would you go a little bit close to the top of the map? Can that go in? Ah, yes. I was worried there for a second we wouldn't be able to exit those. Not a bother, not a bother. All right, let's run a, a belt down the back as well. Once I have all the belts in place on these things, I just find the simplest thing. I, I usually stretch these out so I know exactly how many I need. And then I usually just delete, delete, hold down shift for chain delete. Boom. Oh, assuming you have the mod installed. Then just plop that down, hold, press down, alt, and then stretch the suckers the whole way out. We've got all of the uh, inserters already on these. Boom. At first, you, when you put them down first, you're not going to have the inserters on because the, there's no belts in the way. But once you've actually got the belts down, you can delete most of them and then replace them with the inserters. I just basically use the first one as a template and we're done. Just allows you to stick these together super fast. Oh, power wise, that's actually not too bad. We're going to put one of these, say, right there. And then I usually go with, oh, damn it. I should actually press Alt. Hit Alt, then one, two, three, four, five, six. That should get most of them. If not, I'll just stick one at the back. I'm not really too worried at this point. And done. What? There you go. Boom, and I think we should be powered. Back ones? Yep, all good. Then we just let the resources flow. Should be fairly straightforward. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. And yes, thank you very much. And boom. At the back, we should get our particle broadband after, wow, eight seconds? These things are pretty slow. But that gives us particle broadband, which allows us to finish our science. At the same time, we can use that particle broadband to get level three assemblers. Needing to get around to those for a while is just, well, there was no other use for particle broadband. Done. Oh, yeah. Okay, looking at the time, I think I've hit about the 30 minute mark, so I may have went a little bit long on all the prep work. Apologies for that. I think uh, next episode will be just jumping straight into knocking out the signs. We've got all the prerequisites done. Will it redline our power grid? Yeah, yeah, it's going to redline our power grid the moment we turn on any of the signs. I I'll be surprised if it doesn't knock the whole thing over entirely. We may have to turn a few things off, but there's no way I'm expanding our our power belt our power belt over here has gotten a little out of control uh, I love the way they're following us <laughs> but uh, our power belt is already way too wide we need to get that Dyson sphere up and running so we have enough power 
Uh, soon though, soon. Once we knock out one piece of research, the only piece of research we need is the Dyson Sphere stress system that allows us to expand the Dyson Sphere and then we can start adding in solar sails. Should be a doddle. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.